Hello and welcome. My name is Random Gamer Riven, and once again, I am your host for this randomised gaming video. Don't worry, I'm not going to talk a huge amount as we're mainly doing a gameplay video here. But I thought I did actually want to explain a little bit about the battle mode for Saturn Bomb Man, particularly one particular item that I never see anyone mention that was one of the coolest parts of Saturn Bomb Man's battle mode and so instantly they see the match series. Interestingly most of the other later Bomb Man games didn't have the ability to have series which is why Saturn Bomb Man was such a unique game because it did feature a lot of options that were not present in the later Bomb Man games really. But Saturn Bomb Man really was an extension of the Super Bomb Man series. It took everything from the first five Super Bomb Man games. Yes there's five, two of them weren't released in Europe and the US and then it just basically added to everything they had done previously and it, it's a beautiful game. So you may have seen we uploaded a single player video yesterday that included the awesome story mode or normal game as Hodson Soft called it. Not quite sure why they used to call it normal game, it really is the story mode. Some beautiful animated intros as well both at the start of the, the, the game when you turn it on and in the story mode as well from the start and at the very end there's some lovely animated intros and there's the master mode which was a great way of actually homing your skills and it really is a way to create a competitive online mode which is because originally this did actually support the netlink features in Japan there's actually an x-band version in Japan and I believe the US version supported some form of modem support as well our netlink is slightly different between versions now what I want to show you is this is the 10 player mode now most people didn't tend to play the 10 player mode, I think most people played the standard 8 player mode because in the 10 player mode you've of course only got one field to play on which is the path of glory which is just the basic one. Now you'll notice I've actually got this set to widescreen, the reason being is the 10 player mode was designed to be stretched into widescreen. I don't think it's true 16 by 9 but when you play it in 16 by 9 it looks really really good. And it looks the same. In fact, if you've got it in 4x3 by default it still looks very good but it actually looks, it's one of those few games you can take a 4x3 game actually stretch it 16 by 9 because it was kind of developed that way. I don't know says I don't think it's true 16 by 9 but it looks very nice. Now the reason I wa wanted to show this mode first is that as you're aware there and this is what I never hear anyone talking about there was a secret bonus mode in the Templar mode that I never hear anyone talk about. Certainly it's not really a bonus mode it's more a bonus power up but as you may be aware there is a grabber crane game at the end of each you finish the match provided you have that option on. Basically it awards one player who ever won the match with a bonus item. Now in the 8 player mode the bonus items are slightly different to the 10 player mode or more particularly there's one negative prize that's not present in the 8 player mode that's only present in the 10 player mode and basically for want of a better word it turns the 10 player bomb man mode into an awesome version of monster hunter. Now you might suddenly think what am I going on about? Well, here's the kitchen. This power up it's caused something to appear on screen that completely changed the way you would actually play the tempo mode because players would stop fighting each other and start fighting this thing that appears. It's just, just absolutely awesome and it's a feature that isn't seen in any of the other Bomb Man games. So I'm not going to explain anymore till we actually get to it. But basically the only way to get this item was to be playing in 10 player mode. So as you see there I actually just won a match. Interestingly I don't believe I actually defeated anyone. The AI defeated itself for me. But I was playing on the lowest difficulty to make this as quickly as possible. Because the grabber prize game at the end of the stage is very random. As you move left and right the prizes underneath it change. So you have to kind of know roughly where to go to grab certain items and even though it's not guaranteed. In fact ironically I didn't get the prize I was looking for in the end. It was when, when the AI won a match it actually won it. So there's a great victory pose there. I do love the animation here. It's just really the presentation sat in Bomb Man is fantastic. By far the best of all the Bomb Man games they ever did. So yeah, you'll notice that pair of eyes there in the second on the front row that's just changed it's now in the back row. See that's that's the annoying thing, if you move the grabber crane the pair up actually changed location but you'll notice there's since the pair of eyes there it's in the third row to the front row and it's the third one from the right. Very interesting, so there's a speed pair up. So we actually ran a few matches. So. I do, I'm not going to show you them all, I'm just going to show you two 10 player matches and then once we've shown after two 10 player matches we'll show you the special mode power up one and then we'll also do some standard matches because I want to show a bit of gameplay. I'm not going to talk in the gameplay of the standard matches but I just want to talk about the 10 player mode because it is awesome and you could actually play the 10 player mode on your own against CPU which is something 
more recent studios should learn to do, like Bungie, such as why Destiny you can't play offline of CPU opponents, or even CPU players in matches, seeing as they currently are struggling to get players in lots of uh, deathmatch. In fact, a lot of games, if you've not got CPU players, you really just don't help the player base in any way. Like Gears of War 2 benefit greatly when they did CPU opponents, because you never know, certainly in modern age, how many players are going to play at one time, and if you only got five players, you can get another 5 via CPU, you can get a 10 player team. Even, okay, so the ICPU can't do hard and delicate tasks, but at least you can have a quick match online with only half the players. Which is why I love Saturn Bomb Man, because it's all 10 player can't multiplayer. I should point out, you did actually need two multi taps or the special Japanese Saturn Bomb Man multiplayer. There was uh, multi tap, there was one specifically in Japan that was Bomb Man's face, and it had been layered up to 10 players. To do it in Europe, you just had the standard European one. You actually had to multi tap a multi tap. <laughs> Basically, you need two multi taps, and I think usually it's actually plug one into the other, or you might have been able to plug. They didn't like you to uh, place one multi tap into player one port for some reason on the Saturn, but I think you could plug one into both, or you could just multi tap one off another multi tap to get up to 12 players. And I think there was one Saturn game that might have even supported 12 players, but don't quote me on that. So yeah, there are a few tricks to the trade. I've played an awful lot of Bomb Man games. I do enjoy the series. It's just a shame we are unlikely to see any new ones. And it's just a shame they didn't carry on. Hotsoft didn't carry on. They started going to 3D after Saturn Bomb Man. It never quite worked that well. And then they went to formats like the Game Boy Advance, which couldn't quite do what the Saturn version did. So it kind of got itself a bit lost as a franchise, sadly. And of course, there was the dreadful. Bomb Man Act Zero on the uh, Xbox 360, which was just a disaster of a game. Wait, Bomberman. So that's two two matches from the ten player mode, and here we go. The other grabber crank. Now I'm gonna. The next match is our uh, one we actually grabbed that power up. As you'll see, the grabber. Crane game is quite infuriating and from as I'll show you, I've actually included just a quick snippet of a couple of the many attempts I tried. So that's a heart power up, in case you don't know what that does, that gives an energy to take a hit without dying. As you see there, I, I didn't actually even include all the grabber crane games I did, so I must have played like 15 matches in order to get this power up. But there it is underneath me and as I move it then changes position which is infuriating. But interestingly, if you pay attention to the actual grabber crane bit, the actual toys in the background, they're little easter eggs to the various previous Bomb Man games, some of them, and they also change per every time you enter the game, so you'll see Pretty Bomber in some of the earlier ones. I had, yeah, Pretty Bomber to the left there now. You miss some of the other Bomb Man characters. They're all from different games, actually, a lot of the characters. I think one character from Bomb Man 4 or 5, they're the... But it's quite a really nice subtle touch of cuddly bombs as well. Okay, and huzzah, at last, here we go. And this was actually CPU grabber crane. So you notice Bomb Man's, the crane implies it's a bad item. I really wish done more and actually done like a verse mode with this mode and had new monsters and stuff. You, you'll see in a second why it's absolutely fantastic. So the first minute of this match will appear just like any normal match. And then you will see why this that power up is absolutely awesome. Why we meet myself and my friends would often just play this game, try and get that power up, and then all work together to try and defeat what happens next because it's awesome. And I've not seen any Saturn Bomb Man fans chat about this, so I do wonder whether many of them actually did this power because I think because of the small screen at the time, a lot of people I know, even we were younger, we only had the smaller tellies and this mode was really hard to play on a lot of them. But when we found this power up, this became our favourite mode of the multiplayer because it was just cool. So you're going to hear a sound in a second that indicates something's about to appear.
Da, 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 da. Yes, that is what I can only describe as Bomber Godzilla. And he is about to wreak havoc and basically you can A, run from him or you can try and defeat him. And I say defeat him, you can basically run him off the screen. If you defeat him, hit him enough, he actually gets up and flies away. He flies away automatically as the match nears its end, but you can actually, uh, as you see, he's absolutely awesome. Just sets everything alight, destroys power-ups, crushes anyone in his path, and it's great fun to play. This this mode would have been awesome if they did a multiplayer mode now. You just had different monsters you work together as teams to defeat them. And something that I really would have loved to have seen in other Bomb Man games, but this is the only Bomb Man game I've ever played that had this awesome little cool mode. Absolutely fantastic. Just absolutely cool. It's a shame you can't even play as him or sort of ride him. Basically, he's a huge version of the sort of dinosaurs from the game that you ride, but he's just basically Godzilla and trying to wreck the field and defeat all the uh, players. It's great fun as you see, it's just running down. I, I, I was actually just having a rip, quick go at him to see how many times I could hit him. He's great fun. Eventually he flies off because we ran out of time, but if you if you used to have like 10 minute matches he would appear for like almost all the match and we'd have like five or six of us trying to defeat him and see how quickly we could get him to leave the screen. But now could you imagine an online mode where you just have multiple monsters like that and you've got to work together it would be glorious fun. I really wish, no no one ever seems to talk about this mode, I think most people didn't, said, didn't play in the 10 player mode and certainly didn't grab that power up because it's just absolutely awesome, this guy just trashing the field. He's only available in the 10 player mode as I said and you have to get that power up into this, so there he goes. We're at the last minute so I think he's run out of the time limit saying goodbye because in a second you will start seeing the time over and all the weights coming down so I've got to hurry up, so basically he has to disappear before the hurry up. I really wish they had done more with that and I kind of wish they'd evolved that type of mode further into the multiplayer so you could done bombing matches where you fought the monsters. Instead with Bombman 64 which is probably the sort of next alliteration they kind of went backwards. They moved the game into 3D. They added in the atrocious bomb jumping feature which just did not work and then they kind of tried to make it more story driven and less and took out the co-op mode in the later ones and it just wasn't anywhere near as good in the single player. And they took out the master mode as well, which enabled you. And the master mode in the new Bomb Man game would be fantastic because you compete to see your highest score and sort of time attack. And the master mode was really good in this. If you want to see the master mode or some of the story mode, watch our other gameplay video. So that's all I'm going to show you the 10 player man. What we're going to do now is actually show you a selection of the 8 player maps and play on them. Now we won't play on the standard Path of Glory map because that's just a very basic map, but all the other maps each of their own theme and usually have a particular unique power up or a special mode or something so for example we'll be showing you the soccer stage where there was lots of the kick power ups and if you kicked a bomb into the goal it would launch a massive explosion across the screen there was the desert power up which basically had quicksand everywhere they also had a treadmill that would throw you around the stage and there was a whirlwind that would throw you there's a trampoline stage there's one there's a ninja stage which I don't show you that I think you could hide in stuff and there's of course we're going to be showing you the space stage where you could change the gravity so we're not going to show you every stage but we're going to show you a, a big selection of them we'll swap the characters over again there's the chocolate stage but I think that one just threw stuff around there's a fun fair it, it's really good fun it's a fantastic multiplayer. It just took everything that Super Bomb Man did and just amplified it. Super Bomb Man, of course, by standard, had up to I think about by the end about five players on one system, whereas this ups the ante and gives you eight and ten depending on the modes. And of course, you've got the little dinosaurs, they're not available in the ten player mode either. But I'm not going to say any more, I'm just going to let the matches play out now.
Hope you've enjoyed this Bomb Man gameplay video. It's a bit different to our usual gameplay ones, it was showcasing some of the multiplayer aspect. If you're interested in seeing any more Saturn Bomb Man videos, let us know. We were partly debating whether to do a true play video on either the master mode, the story mode, or both. But certainly, this is one game that I feel needs a bit more showcasing on, like the Godzilla feature, because it's just absolutely awesome and well worth a play. And if you haven't got Saturn Bomb Man on Saturn, it's well worth a pick up. I'm Random Gamer River, signing off. Oh, yep, subscribe, you know, the usual governments, look on the blog, tweet, etc. 